Hello everyone and welcome to Hobby Works. My name is Ebony Andrews. I'm a library associate with the Buckhead branch. For today's craft, we will be creating six watercolor paint techniques and they should resemble this. The cool thing about this technique, or techniques rather, we're not only using watercolor paints, we're using items that could possibly be available to you at home. So we are using rubbing alcohol, we're using salt, and we're also using tissue paper. So let's go ahead and get started and have a little fun. All right, so here are my supplies that I'm using for the craft today. I'm going to show you everything that you'll need. So I have tissue paper. I also have a few Q-tips. I have a white crayon for the crayon resist technique, which is really cool, by the way. <laughs> I also have my glass of water and rubbing alcohol. And then I have sugar and I also have salt, but we're only using salt today. I have my water watercolor paints here. You can choose whichever colors you'd like. I chose about six or seven. And also I chose a round ended brush, paint brush. It's a little dirty, but that's okay. <laughs> And one thing that I feel is important to mention is that when you first start off with painting with watercolors, you have to saturate your paper with water before you actually put color to it. After all, it is watercolor paint. So water is included in every step that you do here. So make sure that your water is on the page and then also you want to dip your water, oh, excuse me, dip your brush in water and then take some color and add some water to it as well. And you're gonna do that every time uh, you go to cha change to a different color. So here I'm starting off with this pretty, pretty, pretty blue And the first technique here in this first box will be the salt technique. Now, one thing that I did not uh, do quite properly is I chose just regular salt. You will need, and, and I would recommend also using sea salt. It's a little more chunkier than your regular fine salt but the chunkier sea salt will actually develop more of an effect, if that makes sense. So I would recommend using sea salt for this one. And I'm just sprinkling it on top of the wet paint. Please, please do not let your paint dry um, because otherwise it will not work properly. You want to make sure your paint is still wet. All right, and looks like I'm going to my next color, which is green. And I'm going back for water every single time. So I did not um, make sure that my box was covered with water first, um, but that's still okay. You can just use, just make sure your water is diluted with your paint color here. This technique that we're using now is going to be the tissue paper technique. 
this one is kind of cool too. I ended up using two colors for this technique. And I found that using more than one color made it a little bit more interesting. So I'm just painting some yellow around the edges here. tissue paper you want to make sure that the tissue paper is crumpled up at the beginning and then once you crumple the paper up you want to kind of push it down on top of the wet paint so with anything that you're doing with uh, watercolor paints and you're using these techniques you must make sure that your paint is wet before adding the other part to it. And I'm just pushing this paper down onto the wet paint. Make sure that it's packed down, but do not push down too much because it's possible that the paper might stick to the paint. So just be very, very careful with that. Alright, so I'm going to my next technique. I'm using purple for this one. I think on the tube it said violet. And I'm using water, more so water than the actual color itself. The alcohol technique is actually my one of my favorite techniques. The effect afterwards is super cool. I think you would like that. Going for a mixture of color here. So I have purple and then I also have, I believe this color was a crimson is what it was called. And I thought it looked cool with the violet. Alright, so I'm taking my rubbing alcohol and putting a Q-tip in it to go ahead and do my alcohol technique. And just squeeze the bottom of the Q-tip and look at that. Isn't that cool? You see how the rubbing alcohol spreads? That's, that's a good thing. You also want to make sure that this, this paint is wet as well because otherwise, if it's not wet, it won't spread.
All right, so there is the alcohol technique. <laughs> and I'm lifting it up because it's just, I love, I'm excited about the alcohol technique. All right, so I'm going back to my tissue paper and looks like it's about done here. Probably could have sat on there a little bit longer, but that's how that looks. And that's cool as well. Okay, so the next technique would be the crayon resist. Now, I have already drawn my design on here with the white crayon. Um, you can draw whatever you'd like. You can draw flowers. You can draw a symbol that is important to you or that you like. You can draw whatever you'd like, um, just as long as it's in the white crayon. And for the colors on this one, I am using yellow, and I'm also using a brilliant red, is what it was called. So I have yellow and then in the middle I will have orange and then at the end, towards the end of this block here, I'll have the bright, only the bright red, bright, bright red. And you can already kind of see the crayon design through the paint here. Isn't that cool? All right, so I'm adding some more yellow for my next technique. The next technique will be the water drops. The water drops are very simple. You're just painting one color down, making sure that that paint is full of water, and then you're just using another color for the drops. All right, so I'm grabbing a Q-tip to use for the water drops. And the color that I've chosen is that bright red that I had previously. I thought it would look the best. With this one, I found it was a little bit difficult only because I may have used too much water maybe I found that the drips or the drops rather were running off of the page a little bit so whenever you find that your drops are running or your paint is running off your page just kind of move it in the direction that you want it to go so that it will stop the running from happening
and I'm lifting up the page a little bit just to make sure it stays on the page rather than running off the side of the page. And I'm doing extra dotting with my Q-tip. You don't have to do that, but I thought it looked cool. All right, so that finalizes the water drop technique. Now we're moving next to our last technique, which will be the splatter technique. It is the messiest and it's the most fun. I'm taking my brush. I started off with that pretty blue color that I used before. And I'm just taking the brush and tapping it. Also, a tip would be to make sure if you're, you know, if you have other stuff surrounding that particular box, to make sure that you cover up everything else because this can be very messy as you can imagine. Very messy, but I guarantee you it's a lot of fun. You can also Take the brush, the tip of the brush, and flick it back if you'd like. I'm only doing this because I didn't want to get too messy, but if you're fine with having paint on your hands, it's, it's totally up to you. And I'm using all of my colors, all the colors that we use for today's craft. I'm using that for the splatter paint here. And I'm also getting some of that all over the other technique boxes, but that's okay. And yes, you will have to clean your brush in between colors, or at least I would recommend doing that, just in case your paint starts blending together. It's possible that that might happen if you do not wash your brush in between. I think the splatter paint might be my second favorite technique. It is a nice background to a lot of art that I've seen before in the past. All right, so we are all finished. All six techniques here. Um, don't they look super cool, guys? And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to message us or post it in this post. Um, also, make sure you give, give me a thumbs up. And thank you for joining me on today.